Hello, everyone. This is Ray Savage from Cambium Networks. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on building the business case for wireless backhaul for public Wi-Fi solutions. Uh, we have some great guests with us today. Uh, we've got Sagar Deshpande, the product manager from Cambium Networks. Darren Hermans, who is a product manager for Wi-Fi solutions with Cambium Networks. Our special guest is Praveen Sampath, who is uh, with Facebook Connectivities, product manager there as well. And uh, during the course of this presentation, uh, we'll be talking about Wi-Fi solutions and how our uh, multi-gigabit wireless solutions at 60 gigahertz can interoperate with those in order to provide some uh, absolutely high throughput Wi-Fi solutions. The uh, webinar is being recorded and it'll be available on YouTube and also on our community afterwards. But during the course of the presentation, these run really well if we run it very much like a discussion. So if you have any questions, anything that you'd like to make sure that we cover, uh, please enter that in the uh, dialog box on the right-hand side of your screen. Also on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll find uh, there's a tab there for handouts. Don't go there just yet. Uh, what you'll find are all the data sheets on uh, the products that we'll be talking about in the course of the presentation and also a solution paper on uh, Wi-Fi backhaul. That's all there available for you to download it as you wish. Well, without any further ado, let's uh, jump right into the topic. So next slide, please. There is no doubt of the value of Wi-Fi and it is in high demand. Uh, people want to have Wi-Fi connectivity wherever they may be. And the challenge for service providers is to uh, answer the question, how do they rapidly deliver that necessary broadband and do it uh, while minimizing costs and maximizing value? If you take a look at the investment in outdoor Wi-Fi solutions, uh, in 2024, it's projected to be 645 US dollars, 645 million US dollars. That's a tremendous, significant amount of money. It's going to be a significant investment in capital and time. But when you start taking a look at the implementation costs, what you'll find is that the average cost of deploying fiber is about 19,000 US dollars per mile or about $12,000 per kilometer. And so service providers have to really take a look at not only how do they provide that broadband, but how do they provide it in a cost-effective situation. So what we're gonna do in the course of this webinar is start to take a look at how we break that down. Um, you know, and Ray, you know, Ray, when you look at this, uh, this when you look at this Wi-Fi hotspot uh, growth Ray. We see that with the with the COVID-19 issues we had this year and the proliferation of that virus and how communities responded to it, uh, that response is not going away. The response is, is very much alive. And there's a lot of predictions that, that hotspots to serve the public, to serve the community, to provide educational opportunities, to provide access to resources, job resources, access to information, um, that is, that's absolutely an investment that municipalities and communities are making uh, for, for, their, for the citizens in their own in their places. And so that's what these numbers are coming from. Uh, there's another fact, um, Ray, another thing I was looking at that predicted that, that hotspots, that term Wi-Fi hotspot, will grow four times between 2000, uh, I think it was 2018 and, and 2024 as well. Yeah. And uh, I guess on our next slide, uh, Praveen from uh, Facebook Connectivity will talk about some of the high-level backhaul use cases. Cases. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Ray, for the introduction. So we feel, and in Facebook Connectivity, we're very passionate about connecting people. And uh, tele Telegraph is one of those uh, innovations which was is mainly to address, uh, you know, the connectivity challenges that we face in a lot of these areas. So with in this webinar, we're covering mainly Wi-Fi backhaul, and we see Telegraph fitting into many different verticals in that space. Um, like on the top left, you see municipal and city Wi-Fi. These are, to Darren's point, you know, these are deployments that are critical right now, right? Uh, you have such a big uh, 
uh, like a momentum going in the direction of deploying more and more citywide Wi-Fi hotspots and municipal hotspots just to give the people the connection they need in order to function and you know serve in this crazy in this crazy time. And this is not going to stop. This is going to continue to happen in the next few few years. And uh, connecting each one of them with a fiber like connection is going to be extremely cost prohibitive. And that's where we see a technology like Telegraph coming in and providing a multi-gigabit backhaul to those uh, APs, uh, access points. Uh, same thing in education and other campus connectivity, university buildings, ho hotels, et cetera, where you could have fiber coming to one central building, but it's really hard to get that capacity distributed to the satellite offices that surround it, right? If you have to trench fiber everywhere, it quickly adds up and it becomes uh, extremely challenging to do that. So we see with these long distance links that Cambium has developed that can go all the way up to two kilometers, providing gigabit capacity, you can quickly backhaul a bunch of these access points located in remote locations with this uh, telegraph technology. Um, also in venues and convention centers, right? Uh, you do need to distribute capacity pretty seamlessly within a large square foot area and having the hassle of running fiber everywhere, uh, especially if you have to put this together in the last minute, it's gonna be extremely challenging. And Telegraph could be a perfect alternative. Um, and we see this at NFL stadiums and a bunch of other venues like concert halls, et cetera, where this could become an increasing uh, trend. So we are very excited about what uh, Cambium is bringing to the market and how it nicely fits into all these different verticals that we're going after. Uh, next slide, please, Olivia. Uh, so yeah, just summarizing some of the verticals that I talked about. Uh, so the, the different verticals that we're trying, we envision uh, telegraph-based technologies that the seen wave to address would be higher education, healthcare, government, uh, and local municipal, municipal uh, municipality buildings and services, hotels and restaurants, venues, retail space, and also uh, managed services. And across these verticals, the total number of access points that are going to be deployed in the next uh, five years is close to 50 million. And this is based on some of the industry reports out there. Um, next one, Olivia. So yeah, so I, I, while this is happening, there's also another pivotal shift that's happening in the Wi-Fi access point ecosystem. Uh, 11AC is being phased out and is being replaced by Wi-Fi 6 or 11AX. So this plot here on the left, it captures the it captures the number of new APs that are going to be shipped in the next five years, and it breaks it down into four buckets. Right, the blue bucket are the replacement 11 AC units, as in new 11 AC units replacing existing 11 AC, and the red one are new 11 AC units being deployed. If you look at that share, you can see that 11 AC deployment is going to go down from about 49 percent in the year 2021, all the way to zero by 2025. And what we see going up is the 11AX or the Wi-Fi 6 APs. This could be Wi-Fi 6 APs that are replacing existing 11AC or brand new Wi-Fi 6 deployments, right? And this is an exciting shift in the Wi-Fi ecosystem because as these 11AX APs come online, they need a robust multi-gig backhaul in order to serve as a, as a, in order to serve their customers because 11AX needs multi-gigabit capacity. Uh, so that's where we see this telegraph innovation, CM wave innovation fitting, dovetailing into that uh, pivotal shift and providing the gigabit capacity needed for that migration. So we are very excited about, uh, you know, the opportunity here to actually serve this uh, transition period. Yeah, thank you, Ray, and uh, uh, Sagar. You know, uh... Yeah, Praveen, just a quick comment on that as well. When you look at, at the applications, um, I appreciate the SAM there showing the technology that is used at the edge access. 11AC, common technology, we've used it for years. Now 11AX, new, new technology. Um, but what's really driving that need, Praveen, is the applications, right? It's what people are doing with that, with that network. And so what they're doing today, uh, we're, they're doing what we're doing right now. What are we doing right now? We are talking on a, a, a real-time communication system, right? 
uh, WebRTC protocols used to used to deliver this real-time communication, audio, video, we're sharing a PowerPoint, we're talking about this, we're having a conversation about it. And this, this is the type of stuff that, that people are doing now. This is absolutely the future. These applications, real-time applications, real-time video, audio, data, is, is only going to grow significantly as hyperscale companies like Facebook and others are, are really driving those applications at the edge. And of course, Cambium is really glad to be able to provide the connectivity, right? The connectivity for those applications. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yes, uh, 11 is, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Wi-Fi 6 is, scales both ways. It can go to really narrow bandwidth in order to serve the IoT devices out there. And it can go the other way where you can guarantee the quality of service like streaming and 4K, et cetera. So yeah, so I, I couldn't agree more. Thanks for that. Thanks, Praveen. Uh, to follow up um, and provide a little bit more details on the CN Wave portfolio, which is a 60 gig, which is generally would be the backhaul solution to power the Wi-Fi 6 protocol. We have three devices, the V5000, which is the distribution node, um, which basically the distribution node talks to subscribers as well as other distribution nodes. We have two client nodes. One is the V1000, which is the mid gain client node and the V3000, which is the high gain client node. All the products are Telegraph certified and uh, are available or can be configured using CN Mastro. Uh, using these three radios, you can either combine them in, into a point-to-point -point combination, point-to-multipoint -point combination, or, or pro provide like a mesh kind of a network uh, for different applications. Uh, the key advantage of meshing is it's easy to kind of build your network on ad hoc style. And the advantage of using a Telegraph product, it's a centralized control. So you have the end-to-end -end controller, which controls the entire network. So in case one link goes down, the end-to-end the -end controller figures out what is the next best alternative. Uh, some of the key advantages of uh, Telegraph is it supports, it works with the standard of 802.11ay, which supports channel bonding. And uh, with channel bonding, basically you can append two or add two channels together to form a wider channel. And uh, the V5000 can do up to 15 Gbps. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. So the V5000 is a dual sector radio uh, and it supports channel one to channel four in the 60 gigahertz spectrum, which is 57 to 66 gigahertz. It supports BPSK to 16 QAM with uh, automatic channel uh, modulation, which means it can go up and down depending on link uh, stability or RSSI. The capacity that it supports today without channel bonding is 1.9 Gbps uplink and 1.9 Gbps downlink per sector. So you have to multiply that by two to get the entire uh, uh, radio capacity. And with channel bonding, as I mentioned, we combine two adjacent channels of 2.16 gigahertz. So that combined channel width becomes 4.32. And ideally the throughput doubles to about 3.8 Gbps uplink and 3.8 Gbps downlink per sector. The 280 degree coverage of the V5000 provides a really good uh, coverage from from uh, either a pole perspective or a street level pers perspective to cover a lot of uh, wide angles. Um, and it also has a elevation of plus or minus 20 degrees. So it forms a, using beam forming, it, it should be able to connect to a lot of subscribers. The V5000 can connect up to 30 subscribers CNs, out of which only four can be converted to DNs or to, pro to provide like a mesh kind of a network. One of the key advantages of CN Wave is its latency. It is sub one millisecond. So uh, definitely this helps out in a lot of uh, uh, real time applications such as a voice call or uh, like a sessions that's currently going on. Right, next slide, please. Darren, back to you. Oh, Ray, I think you're on mute. Yep, there, I'm, up, I'm, I'm on. Sorry, took me a second yeah. there. So, so thank you. So now we take a look at uh, um, Sagar, I like to have you help me out as well to talk about some of these things. So now we can take and look at those same applications, the same devices you're talking about. We can map those uh -huh. into some typical type of use cases. So the first use case is an outdoor Wi-Fi hotspot, and this would be this could be a municipal, it could be just some hotspots around a school or a public building, public spaces. And so what we need here to accomplish this is well, we need power. So one of the key things about this system is you'll notice that we can actually share power between the devices. So we can connect up an access point to a, a, a V3000 and we can power the access point off the V3000. 
We can connect an access point to the V1000. We can power that V1000. So we can actually share power between devices. That helps you out, it helps you reduce the amount of cabling you have to install. Uh, drop in a fiber into the V5000 and then just distribute that content uh, over, over that broadband link, over that, that 3.8 gigabit per second link uh, to, to the endpoints. Now, what you end up there is something that's faster than, than fiber. You know, the most typical fiber technology deployed, deployed today in municipal networks is GPON. GPON is 2.5 gigabits per second. It's a shared technology. It's split, uh, light split, you know, dense wave, dense wave DWDM. I forgot the <laughs> uh, wave to dense uh, multiplexing. Um, but DWDM technology for GPON and it splits the signal. So you, you, uh, you have that 2.5 gigabit that's a shared technology. Uh, in this case, you're, you're sharing, you have a 3.8 gigabit per second. So you have faster speeds and lower latency. So that, that's one. Let's look at another, let's look, take a look at another application of the same technology, but map it into another one. Let's look at the next slide, we can see that. Now let's say, let's build this out a little bit larger, right? Let's just spread this out, not across a small campus or maybe a school, but let's spread it out through an entire city. And how are you going to deploy that? Now, Sagar, you mentioned earlier that um, mesh, you mentioned that the, one of the advantages of Terragraph is is that it it's um so you mentioned there about about how you could it, it it's resilient to network yes. outages yes yeah so that yes. that plays in here quite well in, into this and then you notice also with that fiber link we can actually put multiple inputs multiple broadband or backhaul inputs into that mesh network and we can allow it to to find the, the best path uh, to route the packets back through that mesh. So That's in this correct. case, we're building out, um, uh, we're, we're using the V3000, uh, we're using V5000 distribution nodes, and of course, we're using CN Maestro in the cloud as cloud management. So is there any other comments, uh, Sagar? So I didn't want to even cut you off there. Anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, uh, thanks, Darren. So a couple of uh, minor points uh, to add on to uh, what you mentioned. So one is the CN Wave products can not only take your Wi-Fi backhaul, can also take your 4G. So if you already have an existing network out there, uh, you can plug in, as you mentioned, at multiple plug points. So there's no reason for uh, the radio to only work one way. You can add and uh, remove data from anywhere you want, and the E2E controller uh, figures everything out. The second one is the Wi-Fi mesh uh, as well as the CN wave. Uh, the distances is about 1 to 1.5 kilometers. So it kind of makes sense to, especially if you're doing like a municipality or a campus distribution, uh, it's easier to map out your network and plan it out well. And also keep in mind that the kind of capacity that you need on a day-to-day -day basis is changes um, or even hour-to-hour -hour changes. And that is also taken care by the uh, E2E controller as well. as So it's not fixed. It's dynamic in a sense. Good, thank you. And so you notice in this use case also, where I'm, I'm showing here that this use case could easily be at, be used with Cambium's outdoor 802.11 AC products. So you can mix and match. You can choose the right type of edge access to, to map into this network. Let's take a look, look at another use case. Let's take this concept and let's, let's bring it into the enterprise space. So you might have a school district with small schools within a and a certain geography or small businesses, uh, branch offices. And if you're an ISP, a wireless ISP, and you service a particular geography, there is no reason at all that you can't deliver broadband services to small enterprise. It could be any of these, uh, these examples here, a school, small business, branch office. So in this case, you're gonna need a little bit more intelligence, right? A little more intelligence. This is not public access Wi-Fi. In this use case, we're talking about really enterprise, enterprise networks served with a uh, with the the 60 gigahertz uh, broadband uh, backhaul. So in this case, we're going to have an indoor Wi-Fi network. We're also going to have a secure, intelligent Ethernet network. And from Cambium, when you buy both of those products from Cambium, the Wi-Fi plus the Ethernet, they actually work together in a very unique way. Uh, they actually work together along with the cloud controller, the, the CN Maestro in the cloud, to actually create a very intelligent network that's adaptive. It's adaptive to security changes in the network, adds, moves, changes, it automates all of that to simplify your job 
if your job is the MSP, your job is the systems integrator, it greatly simplifies your job. So what are we using here to build this out? Well, we're using the CN matrix ethernet switch with PBA, that's policy-based automation. Key technology, we're using Wi-Fi 6. This is that 802.11ax technology that Praveen was talking about earlier. And we're using the one here with the software-defined radio. And of course, we're using a, a 60 gigahertz V3000 uh, to provide that broadband connectivity. V5000 as the hub, and this could actually be a point-to-point -point link even, like uh, Sagar was talking about earlier. And of course, what's the last thing you need? Always the first thing on your mind, right? Cloud management, cloud management. Why, the, why do we say cloud management is so important? Why is cloud? I mean, you could put a controller on-premises, right? There's lots of companies will sell you an on-premises controller. Some will even sell you software that you can, that you can install on your own PC. Uh, you know, put it inside of a inside the business. Well, here's why. Very simple, folks. Very simple. Cloud never sleeps. I'm going to go to sleep tonight. I guarantee you, I will. About an hour or so, I'll be asleep. Ray will be asleep in a couple in, in an hour. But cloud never sleeps. All right. Cloud is always redundant. Cloud is always backed up. Always automatic. Always available. That's why it's important to make sure you always uh, manage these networks with, with cloud management. So let's uh, let's take another look. Let's take a look at one more use case uh, here when we take take a look at this. Now, Praveen was talking about, Praveen, you were talking about uh, kind of like campus environment, and you were mentioning um, like a higher education campus, and that's a good example. Um, and I'm, I'm showing here a, a campus that could be a small industrial park. Could be transportation hubs, third-party logistics buildings, and again, when you have these these small campuses, um, you want to create some very high-speed, low-latency links between the buildings. You do that with 60 gigahertz technology. So, what are we using here? Well, we're using that CN matrix Ethernet switch with policy-based automation. We're using a combination of Wi-Fi uh, of 11AC and Wi-Fi 6 access points, depending upon the application within this industrial park. And we're using the 60 gigahertz technology to deliver the broadband. And of course, the last thing we're using, the first thing on your mind, cloud management. So we're, we're putting it all together, bringing it all together under one, one single cloud management. There's, there's four good use cases that you can take a look at. And if you have uh, some thoughts on those, please let us know. Get, get a hold of us. Let us know what you think about these uh, different use cases. Ray? Oh, you're on mute there, buddy. I've got to unmute myself. Thanks, Darren. And uh, I, what I'd like to do now is just open up a quick poll for the folks that are online. Uh, and, and I think that the question would be, obviously, we've talked about different deployments that uh, that you could do uh, during the course of, the, of your deployment. What we'd like to find out is which applications will be the first ones that you deploy. Uh, would it be enterprise Wi-Fi to connect something like an industrial park or a transportation center or something like that? Will it be a small to medium enterprise with a single school, small businesses or branch offices? Will it be a muni a Wi-Fi mesh network that covers a whole area of a city or an outdoor hotspot? Or do you think you're gonna go with something else first? So what I'd like to do is uh, just open that up, just click uh, whatever, whichever one you think you're gonna be deploying first uh, in your first wave of uh, applications and ex network expansion. So we'll take uh, just about a minute here and uh, give you a chance to share, share your thoughts. go for maybe another 30 seconds or so. Let everybody kind of uh, share their thoughts. Okay, and let's go to the results really quick. Wow, okay. Looks like a uh, small to medium business or a single school or a branch office is gonna be the, the best place to start. 
And then uh, after that, it would be uh, industrial parks or a Wi-Fi mesh or an outdoor hotspot. So it seems like uh, folks seem to know exactly where the, if you will, the, the easiest opportunities are. And that makes a lot of sense to start there. Thanks very much, Olivia. Let's uh, go back to the slides. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind, as Darren pointed out, and also uh, Sagar and Praveen, that once you're starting to take a look at providing that connectivity, keep in mind that Cadmium Networks provides an entire multi-gigabit wireless fabric of solutions that, as Darren said, you can design this and tailor it exactly to fit the needs of your uh, network users and also your budget. So whether that would be in a dense urban area, whether you're looking for indoor and outdoor connectivity, something like a school, or going to a residential area, either suburban or in uh, rural areas, or, conduct, or connecting an industrial campus, Cambium Networks has solutions that will fit uh, the need for information and also the budget. And again, all of our solutions are uh, controlled through one dashboard, and that includes Wi-Fi, switching, and your wireless broadband network. Well, if uh, you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the question and answer box, and I guarantee you we'll, we will get to those tonight. Um, but in the meantime, while we're waiting for folks to uh, post some questions, uh, we will, uh, I'd like to just remind you that there are handouts available uh, for downloading in the right-hand side of your dialog box. That would be the data sheets for the CNWAY V5000, the V3000, and the uh, V1000. And uh, as you have opportunities, please don't forget to uh, reach out to us at Cambium Networks. You can get us there through cambiumnetworks.com slash contact us or contact one of our uh, uh, channel partners to discuss your particular solution. Uh, let's see, uh, Sagar, we do have one question that came in. Uh, when will CN Wave be supported through CN Maestro? So CN Wave, thanks Ray. Uh, CN Wave will be supported from day one. So we will have uh, uh, the connectivity of, so people will be able to configure using uh, CN Maestro from day one for the radios. Great. And let's see. Oh, here's one. Somebody is ready to buy. Uh, when when is the equipment ready for ordering? Right. Thanks. Ray. So this, so we are already taking pre-orders for the CN Wave products, and uh, we should start expecting uh, the shipments probably by end of this month. So we're probably within a week or two. And Ray, Ray, let me, Ray, let me add to that. Um, the, some of the other things that we mentioned on this uh, webinar, we talked about Wi-Fi six access points, and so Cambium has released uh, two Wi-Fi six access points. Uh, one uh, high-end, high-density with software-defined radios, and one that's priced for mass market adoption. And we've also introduced and already launched, been launched, shipping them for a long time now, a series of, of Ethernet switches with that intelligent policy-based automation. So now adding in the uh, the 60 gigahertz technology finishes out that, that nice end-to-end -end solution. Great. Thanks, Darren. And obviously, to find more information on uh, the CN Wave products, the CN uh, Matrix switches, or uh, CN Maestro Cloud Management, please go ahead, go to cambiumnetworks.com. You'll be able to find the information or whatever's easier for you. If you want to contact one of our uh, resellers, uh, we'd be glad to, to help you get in touch. Well, those are all the questions we have. Uh, thank you very much, Praveen, for joining us. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Sagar. And we look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you guys. You're welcome, Ray. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.